a library of functions is a set of function that you have to know what the graph looks like. What do I mean by this? Simply speaking, for example, f of x equals to x squared, you have to know that the graph is a parabola. So that means starting from this lesson, every time I ask you to think about the graph of this function, you should know what the graph looks like immediately. You should not be touching your calculator or look it up on Google. So let's do a quick go through. So the first one is f of x equals to x squared. I think everybody know, knows what the graph looks like. It's a parabola. And then uh, what is this point called? This point is called vertex. And then this parabola is a U shape, right? So this U is facing up. It's like opens, it's like a bolt that opens upward. So this, you can call this a uh, vertex, the zero comma zero, or you can call this uh, the lowest point, or you can call this the, the, the minimum, because at this point, you have the lowest Y value. And then if you raise the power from second power to third power, X to the third power, that looks like this. So it looks like a parabola with, a broken left arm so looks like that and then this zero comma zero is the origin and then uh, for the x squared and x to the third x can be any real number positive negative zero anything you like and then the next graph is f of x equals to the square root of x so square root of x is an increasing function you have an arrow that looks like this the function is increasing and then starts at zero comma zero be aware that x must be greater than or equal to zero because you don't see any graph on the left hand side of the y-axis because in quadrant two and quadrant three x is negative. When x is negative, the square root of negative is undefined. For example, the square root of 4 is equals to 2, right? The square root of negative 4 is nothing, is undefined, right? The square root of negative 4 is undefined. So that's why you don't see any graph on the left-hand side of the y-axis. So if you change the square root to a cube root, the graph looks like that. So this one x can be any real number positive, negative, zero. All right, so let's do a quick example. The cube root of positive eight is equals to two because two times itself three times is equals to positive eight. And then when x is equals to negative eight, y is equals to what? When x is equals to negative eight, y is equals to uh, negative two. So when x is equals to negative eight, y is equals to negative when x is equals to negative 8, y is equals to negative 2 because negative 2 times itself 3 times is equals to negative 8. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is equals to negative 8. So for the cube root, x can be positive, negative, and zero. The square root, you just have a 2 in there, but people don't write this out. So basically for a radical, when you have a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, an eighth root, as long as this number right over here is even, then x must be greater than or equal to zero. When the number is odd, like the cube root, um, the fifth root, uh, the seventh, the ninth, the eleventh, the thirteenth, x can be positive, negative, or zero. Okay, so we just cover four, so let's move on to the next row so we have uh, absolute values the absolute value of x so the absolute value of x you have a v shape so basically when x is a uh, positive so let's say x equals to 2 then y is equals to positive 2 when x is negative so let's say x equals to negative 2 y is equals to 2 the absolute value of negative is positive. Absolute value is making the neg keeping everything positive or zero. So you have a vertex at zero comma zero. And then the next one, one over x, this function has a name, it's called reciprocal function. One over x, since you have x in the denominator, so x cannot be equal to zero. You have a curve on the first quadrant, a curve on the third quadrant. When x is equal to zero, there is no curve, so it looks like the curve is broken up when x is equals to zero because at x equals to zero there is a vertical asymptote when x is equals to zero there is a vertical asymptote because when you plug in zero to the function the function is 
undefined. And then the next one is a horizontal line, f of x equals to c, any constant. So let's say y, f of x equals to 3. So you have a horizontal line above the x-axis. f of x is equals to negative 5. Then you have a horizontal line below the x-axis. So for horizontal line, the slope is equals to 0. And then the last one is the linear function. f of x is equals to x. The slope is equals to 1. So you have a straight line. And then uh, I didn't add anything. So this that means the y-intercept is at 0, 0. All right. So that's it for the library of parent functions. Again, just take a little bit of time. Write this down maybe two to four times. And then I am sure that you will be able to memorize what the shape of this function looks like. So starting from this lesson, when I say think about the graph of x squared, don't just go into your calculator and then graph x squared. You should have the graph in, in your mind. All right. OK, so that's it for this video. If you like the way I explain graphs, give me a thumbs up, a like and a subscribe. Truly appreciate your subscription. I will meet you all in the next one. Signing out.